AIM listed coloured gem stone supplier Gemfields, which also owns the luxury brand Fabergé, has reported earnings that show a near 400% rise in EBITDA at $61.7 million on a 57% increase in revenues to $103.4 million. Ian Hairpottle is chief executive and he joins us now. It's a pleasure to talk to you, Ian. Thanks uh, for, for dropping by. Um, in the CEO statement, you say that it was an exceptional first half. I mean, the mining sector is facing considerable headwinds at the moment. How do you appraise the performance of Gemfields in the context of the wider market? Yes, certainly. First of all, thank you for having me here. And you're 100% right. Uh, resources at the moment are having a hard time. Unfortunately, Gemfields, which is a company which is way outperforming the rest of the market, it does suffer a little bit because of general overriding market sentiment. Uh, but the difference with us is Gemfields is certainly a price taker. I mean, maker, not a price taker. So we're leading the way. We're not slaves to, to mar global market conditions. Um, we've got phenomenal products and we're very much committed to growth. So while we're doing at the moment an EBITDA margin of about 60%, what that doesn't show is about 11% of revenue commitment to marketing and growing demand for our product and another 9% expansion, looking for greenfields projects and expanding on our existing operations. So I think that's what really sets us apart, just where everyone else is almost going into a logger mentality, looking inwards, Gemfields is looking outwards and certainly believing in the future. What about prices for, for the high quality end of the emeralds, the rubies, the sapphires and so forth? Ex exceptional. Uh, uh, Gemfields over the last six years now, we've literally achieved an 80% year on year increase in achievable prices. We're a mining company that markets, so that 80% is at the rough side of the, of the spectrum. But we've seen the same flow through, not quite 80%, but certainly a healthy increase at a retail level in terms of prices, supported by a healthy increase in demand from all markets, so very encouraging. Yeah, um, when we last spoke at the full year, um, we were talking about the joint venture that Gemfields has with the East West Gem Investments Limited yes. for uh, the, the Sapphire market, an exciting new sort of branch for, for Gemfields. How's that going? Um, is there anything more to report on this? No, no it's early days. I mean, we're very pleased. We have, we have clearly become the world's leading, uh, the single largest producer of emeralds. Um, very soon to be the single largest producer of rubies. The market has accepted our emeralds and ruby, our two-pronged approach very well. And we've just moved into sapphires. We're very committed to emeralds, rubies and sapphires, what I call the traffic light of color. Mm. And once that's working, there's uh, so many other phenomenal stones. Um, in terms of uh, ruby, is, uh, sapphires and Sri Lanka, it's early days, as I said. We, historically, there was a time we moved into a market maybe a little bit like the, the large company mentality, a little bit bold, a little bit brave. We found that when you're moving into an area where there's smaller operators who don't necessarily have those skills or resources, they can be frightened, they can be nervous, and we actually see them as compatriots and co-stakeholders. They might see us as opposition. So rather than barging in, spend the time to build friendship, build relationships with governments and locals, and look to build the industry together. And that's our approach. Um, we've started both exploration on some of the lices and small scale trading of, of uh, sapphires and we're looking to blow, grow it on an exponential. We're not really rushing there too fast because our Montepuez Ruby mine is just phenomenal. Mm. Continued year by year growth uh, in terms of efficiency and outputs at Cargem and exponential growth at Montepuez. So, you know, we've, we're a smallish company, focus on one thing at a time, but we they certainly see a lot of excitement in sapphires. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, the rubies and emeralds and the auctions that you've, yeah. you've undertaken. I mean, how good have they been? You've been doing um, top end and, yeah. and sort of mid-grade, mid, mid haven't yeah. you, as well? Well, exactly. So, uh, so far in the first half of this financial year, the, the results to December, we had two high quality, a high quality ruby and a high quality emerald auction and a low quality emerald and we've just um, recently had another low quality emerald so we've had basically two high and two low and demand is very firm as i say and it's vitally important remember your higher quality your higher smaller volumes but significantly higher value that tends to go to the high end the big brands and and the really the big names very expensive product um, but don't forget the high street the tv channels the walmart they're all vi vitally important walmart being one of the larger retailers of diamonds in the world so it's very important that each one of them are sold each stone is perfect for the individual consumer and we're certainly seeing increased demand. Very, very pleased with the results. Yeah. Again, almost talking to you six months ago, you were talking then about a Colombian emerald project yeah. that might uh, start to surface. Any more news on oh, that? Oh, Colombia is great. You know, the three largest producers of emeralds in the world, Brazil, Colombia and Zambia. We've got a very firm foothold now in, in uh, Zambia. And Colombia is a great country, wonderful people. They've been mining emeralds for 500 years and we are certainly very keen. Uh, we're not there yet, so I can't give you the thumbs up 
and say done deal. But we, pro we certainly are closer than we've been and hopefully I'm pretty sure before this uh, calendar year is out, we'll have some good news for yeah. the market. Let's talk about Fabergé and how that's uh, fitting in. Um, we, we spoke a couple of uh, three years ago, whenever it was, at the Fabergé shop when, when, you were t when, yeah. when it was taken over. Um, and the, the business is just about break even at the moment, isn't it? I mean, how's things going at Fabergé? Because one of the uh, big outlets is, is Russia and Ukraine, of exactly. course, and there's obviously exactly. some well highlighted difficulties around. Yeah, that. well, first of all, it was just over two years ago when we met at the store. Um, it's not breaking even yet, it's certainly improving. So, in the last 12 months, We've seen about a 2.5% increase in sales. We saw a 17% reduction in costs, um, which are effectively a loss at the moment because the costs are slightly higher than the revenue. But it's an incredible brand. It's a phenomenal brand. Remember, Gemfields is a mining company that markets. We acquired Fabergé as part of the marketing wing. But any investor into resources will know you don't acquire a great mine and turn it to profitability straight away. It takes time and investment if you want to do it right and if you want to do it sustainable, sustainably. We've certainly very pleased with the product, the, the uptake in demand. You know, we had to mention Ukraine, we had to mention Russia because it's part of the heritage of the brand. Yeah. Some of the sales do go there, so it did have an impact. But in reality, we've just launched some of our new product at the Doha show in Qatar. Yeah. We had launched the first uh, Imperial class egg that has been made by the company while the brand and the family are, are united in 99 years. And that sold within a couple of days of unveiling. And the investor bought it because he firmly believes in the investment value of the product. So we are very excited and so is the market. So um, Fabergé profit, when is yeah. that likely to happen? About 18 months again. I have said that uh, probably when I saw you six months ago, I said 18 months or so. We're getting closer. Gemfields prefers to under promise over deliver. Um, during then and now, a lot of things have moved well. But it's one of those things as you expand your success, you expand your vision. Um, and we've, we, at a, at a Fabergé standalone level, it might be a bit longer. At a Gemfields level, the su success has been phenomenal already. Not only driving demand for our but so many of the bigger brands are now because of this have seen us and are starting to say Ian we want to include your product in our portfolios as well so overall definitely hitting uh, achieving our, our vision what do you say then about the next uh, next six months these are interim figures uh, exactly. at your full year last year and you got 160 million of revenue yeah. in total you're 103 million in the bag yeah. at the moment at this point 103 million dollars uh, what about the next six months well you know we as a company firstly we don't do forward-looking statements and we've built a reputation and I'm very proud of it under promise over deliver. We've given fair guidance to the analysts. We now have between eight or nine analysts covering us. The consensus target revenue is about 180 million. I'm pretty sure we should do that, hopefully a little bit more. Um, we've just done a 60 odd million EBITDA. Um, and, we, and a lot of the analysts' EBITDA target was 60. I'm sure we're going to be do, out doing the EBITDA targets. Um, but more excitingly, you know, we, we ended up the half year with 50 million in cash and almost 100 million in stock at cost of production. We were able naturally to sell that at a significant multiple. So we've once again ended up where our cash and our stock is almost, if not more, than our market cap. So certainly, in my opinion, one of the sterling investment opportunities out there. Good luck with everything and uh, thanks for dropping by. Excellent. That's Ian Hairbottle. So He's much. the Chief Executive of, uh, of Gemfields.